It's been said that people who follow their hearts are destined to live their dreams. For the Cabello brothers, that dream has become a reality in one of the greatest American success stories. An idea born on the windswept plains of western Nebraska would, for the country's 50 million sportsmen and women, become part of America's sporting heritage as Cabela's came to symbolize the spirit of the outdoors shared by the hunters and anglers from Maine to Alaska and from mountain elk camps to saltwater flats. Dick Cabela and his younger brother Jim would parlay their lifelong love of the outdoors into a business that would take them on a most memorable adventure. As with any epic journey, there were plenty of turns in the trail and twists of fate that no one could have predicted. All along the way, they never lost the one passion that started the dream in the first place, a love of hunting and fishing. Born and raised in uh, western Nebraska, and Grew up in a small town called Chapel, Nebraska. And uh, my brother and I and some of the other kids, we used to go out and do a little fishing and once in a while go out and try to shoot some rabbits. And we kind of grew up in the outdoors. The first fishing pole I had was not a pole, but a stick with a, just grocery string or something wrapped around a stick with a hook and a sinker on it. Then I went away to college, then we got married and we moved back to Chapel and I run my dad's furniture store. And on a buying trip to Chicago to buy furniture and housewares, uh, run into this little uh, outfit selling imported fishing tackle. And being avid fishermen, I thought I'd better see what they were selling. And they had some uh, very inexpensive fishing flies. I think they were a cent and a half a piece made in Japan. I bought a bunch of those and thought maybe we could sell them in the hardware and furniture store, but uh, they didn't sell. So I finally took the whole lot on my personal self and decided to see if I could sell them. Dick Cabello thought he might be able to sell the flies if he made them available to more potential customers. So he purchased a classified advertisement of the Casper, Wyoming Tribune newspaper. That ad offered 12 hand-tied fishing flies for one dollar. We got exactly one answer. That didn't quite pay for the ad. And so, come up with another crazy idea. Let's see if we can give them away for a quarter. So uh, we'd run five hand-tied flies free, send 25 cents for postage and handling. Dick Cabello placed the new ad in Sports of Field magazine. Men, women, and children soon began responding to the ad for free flies. And more often than not, they'd secure their quarters or 25 cents worth of nickels, dimes, and pennies with tape. It was amazing how many orders you got for that. I took a quarter of the labor to get the quarters out of the envelopes. For the Cabela's, it was a fateful bit of marketing ingenuity that would be the key to launching a company of legend. When we started, we had a lot of fun just working together and, and growing this thing, not knowing that it was going to grow like it was. We finally found a girl across the street who was, her name was Susie Gerber, and she would come over and stay with the four little kids and Dick and I would go downtown and work, do the typing and that kind of thing when the kids were asleep. The budding mail order business led to demands from the nation's sportsmen, who when traveling through Nebraska en route to the great sporting havens of the Rocky Mountain West, would stop by the company's makeshift warehouse in the hopes of adding to their collection of outdoor gear firsthand. Jim and Dick Cabela did not want to open a retail store. They truly wanted to have a catalog business that they would send out catalogs, people would send in their orders, they'd send out the merchandise, everybody was happy. Dick and Jim Cabela struck off to industry trade shows, determined to legitimize their dream. Not only did vendors view Cabela's with skepticism, few believed that the as yet unproven direct mail catalog could possibly succeed. Back in the early days when we first started to expand into other lines of fishing tackle and hunting gear, Murray and I used to go to the shows and uh, it was a good thing and a bad thing. The one thing about it, the first thing they'd say is, 
Where's Chapel, Nebraska? We never heard of that. But the good thing was there was no other dealers out there either, so we didn't infringe on anybody else's dealership. And we were able to buy lines. After a while, we could really get the line we wanted and, and get it in stock and start selling it through the mail. But I remember in those early years, uh, I had to take the Cabela's catalog along and explain to every vendor who we were, what we were all about, and convince them that uh, we were a good company. From the very beginning, Cabela's employees often were the first to get the chance to try the products the new company was selling to its mail order customers. Cabela's employees also were encouraged to look for ways to improve those products. And that's a tradition that continues to this day. Uh, we used to have a lot of uh, after hours conversations in Dennis's office. Um, but that's where an awful lot of the strategy, the philosophy, the approach to marketing, product ideas and all of those kinds of things were decided with five, six, seven people sitting in Dennis's office uh, just talking about what we were all so passionate about. I think it's really important to uh, really get to know the people working for you and they get to know you and you build a bond. Everybody has to realize that uh, the owners uh, in their office uh, back in those early years in the old uh, brick building were side by side and they always had a door between them was always open they could always hear which uh, what each one of them was saying um, dick seems to have been uh, from my perspective the the visionary dick was was very um, motivational uh, really an idea guy in the company and when dick was around you could see he could excite people and, and he was really a strong influence on uh, how people looked at the hunting and fishing business and how they looked at the company and um, really felt made you feel like part of the Cabela's family. Jim on the other hand is the conservative, uh, the thinker, you know, he kind of maybe one is one is the motor and one is the anchor kind of thing. He's sort of a personality wise a little more of a pessimist and I'm a little more of an optimist and he knocks me down and I kind of push him up and that's how we kind of meet in the middle. Jim's very quiet doesn't say, uh, doesn't say much, but when he says something, it means something. Uh, be brief, be blunt, and be gone was, uh, I forget where I got it, but I, it really appealed to me, so I put a little sign on my desk, and it's still sitting there. Across the nation, American sportsmen began to spread the word about Cabela's, a company that was rapidly captivating the hearts, minds, and wallets of hunters and anglers. The Cabela's catalog became far more than a shopping tool. Its arrival in sportsmen's homes across the country, delivered at the peak of interest in upcoming hunting and fishing seasons, marked a new holiday on the sportsman's calendar. Oh boy, the first catalogs, uh, you know, it was kind of a big step and uh, we had them printed in Denver and uh, we hauled them over here in a cattle, uh, cattle truck. Save freight. While looking for ways to grow their business, Dick and Jim Cabela decided to add a fall catalog to their lineup, in part to improve sales during a slow time of the year, and to widen the scope of hunting and fishing products they offer. That decision laid the foundation for Cabela's to become the world's foremost outfitter, and the data gathered from those early sales allowed them to target the wants and needs of consumers.